there's something very evocative about the horse, very evocative, uniquely evocative. And they have such forgiving spirits that they can teach us the essence of life is forgiveness, community for the greater good, and living now. I just clearly remember being given, when I, when I sort of looked at what my ideal life was, a very clear visual. And I was on the top of a hill. There was a big golden valley to the left, and there was this big blue expanse in front of me that was some body of water. And that was my, my place. And um, when we actually came to the property, and walked it and went up on the crown chakra, that was exactly the view that I had seen. It was almost like I was given it and then I had to find the match for it. I had to find the place that matched the picture. Well, I suppose when, it, when I first got here and was living in my tent, um, my husband was, was away and I was all alone. and. I had been keeping a journal for, uh, for a couple of years, and I began to journal my, my thoughts nice about you know my lessons in aloneness and coming to terms with my fears and letting the last little few fears go and, and all my experiences that I was, all my you know, feedback I was getting from the horses. The horses as healers sort of came along as a later discovery, um, we started to bring people here and they would all recount stories of miraculous healings after just being in the company of the horses. And we decided that we would try putting the massage table or the healing table in the paddock with the horses and actually running some energy and then seeing what came about as a result of that. So we did a few little forays into, you know, experimenting that way and really quickly realized, wow, it was amazing. Well, I, I, first of all, I'd say that the whole herd are healers in that they're holding the energy and, and that level of resonance. Um, specific horses appear to me to be totally fascinated with the healing process. So um, Pashar, he'll actually put his forehead against you and he'll just take you to a completely different realm. And this is Magic. Magic was the first one to come over and that was an incredible experience because she um, just very gently walked over and um, nuzzled against my head and started breathing and I could feel it rushing through my whole body. Can we interview you? Uh, Crystal, who's the daughter of my lead mare, same thing, she's a total healer. I've seen her bow to a person coming and go over to the table and wait for them to get on the table because she's there. One of the aspects that's really important is when you're working with the horses, working with permissions. And um, this has been something that I've been working with for a long time. And uh, what it basically means is that, you know, if I was walking up to Bella, I wouldn't go straight into her space and grab her and walk her away without being like, hi, Bella, how are you? All these horses, um, whether they let you know or not, are trained to move by energy. <laughs> I think it's the same concept that we would use for group healings. 
as it is working with the horse as a unit. Um, the more energy you put into it, the better. One of the reasons why I was drawn to this experience this summer is that um, I sort of feel over the last few years that I've lost some of my magic, I guess you could call it. I am a certified equine sport therapist, um, and I have been for about seven years now. I kind of got to this point in my practice where I realized that what was necessary for me to sort of really bring the amount of healing that I was wanting to bring to my horses and to my animal clients, I would have to bridge the gap between human and animal. So what I happened upon was a system called Body Talk, and uh, it's a very comprehensive system, and it really made sense to me right away. Uh, essentially with body talk and animal talk, what I'm doing is I'm just facilitating a communication with what we call the innate wisdom. So it's something that all of us have, every one of us, and it's basically that part of us that knows exactly what is necessary to bring about the highest state of harmony and well-being. So, you know, when we cut our finger, the body knows exactly what processes it needs to go through, hopefully, <laughs> to bring about the healing and, and reconstruction of that finger. So this is essentially just taking that out to a larger scale. Um, Diva picked me as, you know, as far as I could see. <laughs> I think at the beginning it was, it was a very interesting timing because I was just started down the rabbit hole, so to speak, <laughs> into energy medicine and what that was all about. And I remember moments where she would literally stand calmly at the side of the round pen looking out <laughs> with one leg cocked. And I would be standing in the middle having a temper tantrum, you know, because I thought that this would make her move, and of course it didn't. And so she just taught me this beautiful way with my energy and how to be consistent and respectful and fair and um, clear. And I think as well, the other piece was just to be really congruent. I mean, this is a word that comes up so much in sort of this field. It's the sense that you know, the inside matches the out. And that's, for them, so important. I mean, for them, that's survival. That a girl, she was tough. That a girl. I had closed the door on getting another horse after our first horse died. And I had bonded with him so hugely at that time in my life that uh, I said no, when really I wanted to get another horse. Moonlight, it was, it was um, September. And I saw her and I could see and feel from a distance how, how wary she was. And I took note of that and thought it was odd because my first horse was the most easygoing Joe and I thought all horses were like him. He was my frame of reference. I had only been exposed to seasoned, you know, quarter horse, you know, and I just, I, I thought horses were like Labrador retrievers. I just didn't know. Didn't get my first horse till I was 40. And I could see, I could, I could sense it. And then when I got close enough, in the moonlight, I could see her face and I could see that scar, her lightning shaped scar going down her face. And I had a visceral hit to my belly, just right to my solar plexus. And I just got a sensation that she would change my life forever. We're gonna do a session on Connie, but we're gonna kinda do it with Shasta. A lot of programs that work with horses that, that I know of, um, 
work with horses in a more traditional way. They'll, they'll have halters and lead ropes and you know, somebody will pick a horse or the horse will pick them and then they'll go and lead the horse into a confined space with that person for that experience to happen. Whereas here, it's, it's a big open paddock. The entire herd and Tesoro, the steer, are free to come and go at will. So it, it's a much more fluid um, interaction and, and it's really quite miraculous at times to watch the things that that these horses do when, when, you know, things are coming up for people. I might as well start with the horses. They greeted me at 4 a.m. this morning. I was sitting on my blanket over there, close to where we smudged by the rock, and I was doing my own meditations and they came up and um, it was just a, a very thankful, overwhelming greeting. As a kid, I never had girly toys. I always asked for stuffed horses or animals and they had to be the absolute natural color. <laughs> I didn't have anything that didn't look real. And my first pony, my grandpa orchestrated. This was my pony, and then this was my second horse. We did everything. We, we pretended we were cowboys and, and natives, and we'd hook stuff onto the back with ropes and pretend that we were doing sleigh rides. I guess because of trauma scars and stuff as a child, I couldn't connect with people. I would, I, I literally would vibrate with fear. Um, with the horses and the animals, that was my only place I felt comfortable and, and loved. Lot of her own trauma and baggage, but it was, it is, and it is very parallel to mine. That's why she's been able to reflect it so beautifully. She was carrying it, but she was helping me by mirroring it. It was very disquieting. It was horrifying to feel how much resentment, anger, lack of forgiveness, etc., that I was holding for myself and others. Horrifying. We had to have some, we had to have some extreme bucking, rearing, kicking, bolting, terrifying. She had to install some terror in me so that I could feel it, because it was buried so deep. Wherever Shasta took me in that moment where she, I said in my book, scared me to death um, and reconnected me to, to emergency and to that level of fear and that, that level of sheer terror that I had so, been so good at not living in um, or allowing myself to, to feel. Um, whatever that is, whatever that gateway was, um, Alice's rabbit hole, I've called it a lot of things, that portal. It's a one-way ticket. We went together. We leapt through that together. I was horseback when I took that quantum leap. And by the grace of God, we stayed together. And when I dismounted and when we stood there trembling next to each other, we both knew we were different.
they have no expectations, you know, the way we do. You know, we might get on the healing table and, oh right, yeah, I expect to be cured of my, you know, sore shoulder or whatever. They have no expectations and they just come and they don't, they may not go to our sore shoulder, they may go to our heart chakra or our base chakra and, and you know, clear that and suddenly our sore shoulder's better. They're just clear channels for that healing energy to come through. And when we learn to respect animals, and not just horses because other animals have that healing ability as well, when we learn to respect them and treat them as fellow beings rather than, you know, cats or dogs or whatever they are, um, then, you know, they will all help us to heal. Healing sessions for me on tables tend to be, rather than releasing of the negative, rebuilding of the positive. So I find them uh, very powerful. Um, so is anything coming up for you at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, do you just want to think of that, Connie? Whatever that is. With me, any time that I've injured myself or hurt myself, you know, I, uh, I'll be standing at the feeder and they'll, they'll just come over and they know when I have a sore back. They, they come up to me and they massage my back for me or if I've been lifting too much, you know, they come and you get a, you get a nice, nice little nuzzle on the shoulder and then the pain, it, they just take that pain right away from you. A lot of stuff was happening in my family. My son, oh, my son got really, really, really ill. He was going through an emotional time and every emotion that he felt, I felt, and I, I couldn't figure out why I felt that way. And then he had the attack on December 11th and I just thought I was going to lose him, like I totally thought he was gone, he was unrecognizable in his mind, mentally. And then all that stuff comes up, you know, like you blame yourself and blame yourself for not being there to protect them more and I just started beating myself up, <sighs> blaming myself. So I would go out in the evening and I would just be, just lay in the lounger or clean the barn or just be with the horses and they would come up and they would just start these sessions on me. I was just standing in the paddock and I was just looking at the stars and the moon and dude came up on one side and Billy came up on the other and dude just started working on different spots and he would you know start in the legs and just and he'd grab different parts like this and then he would uh, he would get more intense and he'd go like this he'd never bite go like this and then that pretty soon his head would be going and he's just, he's taking it off and he's shaking his head and he's picking his feet up and kicking it off. And, and B Billy would be on the other side doing almost exactly the same thing. And then what I noticed was they would change. Billy, our dude seemed to be the initiator and Billy was his helper. And Billy would come and he would put his nose on dude's body like a connection point and I'd have my hand on Billy's withers or his neck or or on on his um, chest and he, it was like he was holding me up and supporting me. They taught me how to how to help them after because they were taking so much. Dude would actually after a session he'd go away, he'd roll or shake and then he'd come back and he would push either his bum into me or his face and I he was teaching me how to help him like sweep off the energy after and he'd pick up each foot as I went down each leg and he'd kick it and stretch it off and he'd shake his head and like he literally pushed me around his body and showed me how to 
help him after he helped me. You know, I, I, I say things to friends, you know, about what I'm getting from my horses when I'm out. And one of them said one time, whoa, you must have different horses than me. <laughs> I said, no, they're not any different. <laughs> This morning when I was looking out, these two big girls, mother and daughter, had just a sandwiched in the middle. And they were just being really kind, like one was smelling one side, one smelling the other. It was like a Shasta sandwich. It was really funny. Right? You kind of like her. She's eating, and they're not. Right? This is sad, but true. She's eating and you're not. She doesn't even live here. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't even live here and she's getting all the food. Humans, occasionally we listen to our intuition, right? We'll, we'll get a prompt and we'll say, I really should listen. That seems like, you know, something that I'm being asked to do. And then we go, oh, no, I'm too busy. I can't schedule it in. <laughs> and we don't. And usually there's a really bad, you know, um, result for not listening to it. I've always been interested in, um, in any kind of healing, in any kind of spiritual practice that views life as whole and perfect. Start working with the vertebrae, mm -hmm. and then we ask which way is it out of balance. So it's this way. With these horses here, it's just been yeah, transformative, I guess, to work with a herd that has never experienced any force within their lives. What's it like to have this 320 to yourself, huh? Pretty amazing, huh? We're always gonna have stuff, right? But I notice now, 
I can move through it much faster. While my horses gave me breathing space and an escape and love when I was a child. I used to play, you know, the postal, postal pony. I used to run around with all the messages. They carried my saddlebag a message for me. So now, after going through the healing and, and finding myself, my horses are now bringing me my messages. The ones that I had when I was a kid, they're bringing them back. And they're reminding me that dreams do come true. In my work, I, I'm really intrigued with animal consciousness and with horses. It's like they're mirrors, you know, that's, that's their, their gift to us, is if we choose and if we can let go of the fear at really looking at ourselves <laughs> in the mirror and really seeing it all, flaws and everything and beauty, then, you know, we are that much further ahead on our journey because, you know, once we let go of that fear and just allow that reflection to come back to us, that's when we can start to heal whatever's going on for us. And, and they really give that. I couldn't have written a better script for the dream of bringing Shasta here. It has been truly amazing. And today was just all the right people in all the right places and just a profound connection it's so beautiful to think of how just I believe deeply that horses are calling us in unique ways to save us from ourselves, to bring us back to the willingness of our own heart, our own soul, because they have never lost that connection. I want to make the world a better place. I want people to understand animals as spiritual equals. We are just that creative life force in matter. Diverse, special, unique, each one of us, whether you know we're a, a human being or a horse being or a tree, it's all one all one entity.